Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at readings from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees do the same. But yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast when the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch the old one. Otherwise he will tear the new, and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine must be poured into fresh wineskins. And no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here we have another encounter of Jesus uh, with the scribes and the Pharisees, and they're questioning him about the demeanor, the way in which the disciples of Jesus are carrying themselves. They're not fasting, <clears throat> and they notice that that's very different, of course, from the disciples of John the Baptist or the disciples of the Pharisees themselves, both of whom have fasting as a part of their regimen. You have John the Baptist, of course, his whole message is about repentance, and part of repentance is a call to fasting. And, and uh, of course, for him, it was baptizing them, but the people would fast as a part of the reparation for sins. And the same with the, the Pharisees. Because in the Old Covenant, there were, necess- uh, there were days that were set apart necessarily for, the, uh, for fasting. Uh, the Day of Atonement, for example, and other days. There were also times of fasting where people would fast in order to bring about a a sense of of cleansing and and closeness that would be a way of them uh, denying themselves. And and this is something we practice today. And uh, in fact, we find that fasting is something that is a part of our Lenten practice. So they're asking Jesus, why don't your disciples fast. They eat and drink. And Jesus likens it to a wedding feast where when the bridegroom is present, nobody in the bridal par- in the wedding party is going to fast at that point. It's a time of celebration. And there will come a day when fasting will again return. But during this special period, and that's what Jesus is pointing out, that the fact that he is with his disciples is a special time for them. It is a time of celebration because he, the bridegroom, and again, this is a type of Christ in his church where he's using this as an example. And the interesting thing is that, again, even in our disciplines today, we find that fasting takes place during Lent, but it's discouraged in Easter tide, when we have those days following uh, the Sunday of Easter on up to Pentecost during those that Easter season, we're really encouraged not to fast. It's a period of celebration. It's resurrection. These are exciting days. And then Jesus takes it even a step further from this, and he talks about that what is going on is brand new. And so things are going to be different. Any more than you take an old garment, if you put a a piece of cloth on it that's new and it's an old piece of garment, uh, when it's washed, uh, it will tear. I mean, whenever it comes wet, the old cloth and the new cloth will basically behave differently because of where they are in their use. And the same with new wine and old wineskins. The old wineskins get brittle And they're good for the old wine, which is already fermented. It's just basically a carrying case. 
But with new wine that's still fermenting and, and the yeast is still at work, the, the, uh, the wine skin needs to be somewhat pliable and flexible in order to contain the new wine. And so Jesus is again talking about the fact that what he is about is something new and something different. That the old uh, application of such things, even of fasting, is going to change in terms of the new that is coming. And of course, here he's contrasting the old covenant of the Old Testament with the new covenant that is in his blood. And there's an interesting little sidelight to this that I like to share whenever I share this passage of Scripture, and you've probably heard it from me or maybe perhaps from someone else, and it has to do with wineskins. And it's really an encouragement to all of us and an encouragement even back then to the times of, of the disciples with Jesus when he talks about new wine being poured into fresh wineskins. And that is that there is a way in which an old wineskin can be freshened. It can become like a new one. And the way that an old wineskin is made fresh so that it could in fact contain new wine is that the uh, workman with leather, the tanner, would take oil and he would begin to anoint and to work the oils into the skin. It was called the newing of the skins. And as he continued to work the oil into the skin, it began to br bring new life to the wineskin. And it again became flexible and would be able to be used to contain new wine. I think that's really good for all of us to remember that as the oil is applied now, in our baptism, we have oil applied, both the oil of the catechumenate and the oil of chrism. That oil is to freshen us that we might receive the newness of life through the gospel. Oil is used in the anointing of the sick. Oil is used in the ordination of a, de of a deacon and a priest and a bishop. Oil is used in a number of ways, and it is symbolic, obviously, and of course, of the Holy Spirit being poured out at that moment. And so those anointings freshen the individual that they might receive what is going to be given to them. And again, as we continue through life, we need to pray that we would continually receive that fresh anointing, that fresh oil of the Holy Spirit, that we might continue to contain the newness of those things that we might receive as we continue to grow in him. So that's a little bit of an aside and a great little practical application. Often it's good, you know, when you're reading the scriptures, when you're going to prayer, uh, when you're doing something to invite the Holy Spirit to come, to come at that moment and to just be with you as you do that new thing that God is calling you to do. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, thank you again for being with me during uh, one of our day-by-day -day episodes, and we'll look forward, the Lord willing, to being with you tomorrow. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.